Boom, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mount MoGraph. As always, my name's Matt. In today's video, I have a cool little tip for spicing up your uh, Illustrator artwork uh, by bringing it into After Effects. So I'm gonna start with some kind of project that looks like this, just a really simple illustration. And when I got to do the shading and stuff, I was like, man, there's gotta be a better way. And that better way is actually an After Effects. So we're gonna start by creating a new composition. Any of your vector artwork will work here. Um, you can actually import it, just double click and just import whatever uh, you need to in the project panel, or you can just use the tool Overlord, which I like. I'll link it in the description below. And it's gonna send all of my artwork just in a vector over to After Effects so I can work with it a little bit easier. Um, After Effects can handle like a lot of layers at once, a little bit easier than Illustrator can for like layer styles. So that's why I recommend working in it. So once you have your artwork over here, we've got 83 different vector layers. We're just going to go in Command A and select everything, right click and go on over to our layer styles. We're going to add the inner shadow. So just give it a second to think. And once all of your layers have this inner shadow, I'm just going to scroll up to the top here and select um, just this, all, all the properties at once. So I'm going to use the Midas grab tool. But if you don't want to do that, you can just type in um, the angle that you're trying to grab just like this, or I said angle, the property you're trying to grab and just uh, like, you know, scroll down and grab all of the different properties. Still pretty easy, um, not quite as fast. So uh, what I was gonna say is you just grab your layer styles, your inner shadow, and I'm just gonna grab all of the different properties. I'm not sure what we're gonna be tweaking yet. Um, and it's just gonna grab all of the different properties at once so we can like bulk change them um, and just visually see how the whole artwork is gonna look instead of like one layer at a time and pasting that style to everything. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And basically we're just going to crank up this noise property. Since everything is selected, you're gonna see all of the different artworks uh, get the, uh, the noise added all at once. And this is like kind of a nice little style. So I'm just gonna change the distance here as well. Um, maybe crank this back a little bit. That was kind of aggressive. And once we have like kind of a distance and a noise that looks like uh, pretty good, I might even change the opacity, maybe change this to like a screen or something. I don't know, you can mess with all your different blend modes and wind up with something cool. Maybe normal will look better than multiply. And once you kind of have an interesting style that maybe isn't as easy to achieve in um, uh, whatever you'd call it, Illustrator, I might even switch this color to something kind of ridiculous. Um, we can move on to the next step. So I like to always work with kind of strange colors, at least for just different artworks. Um, we could change something with the angle, but I'll try to keep this video a little bit short. I'm just gonna grab everything all at once. Shift Command C to throw it into a new pre-composition. And since we have this kind of cool little uh, shading now on everything, I'm gonna right click and just go on over to an adjustment layer. And this is where I love to use the CC toner. And this is going to be just kind of like a cool secondary adjustment um, of our colors just to get a more interesting color palette. Um, I just, I guess I've been doing this more and more um, with any like illustrations. I'm not that good at illustrating. So I always find like at least working with a cool color palette makes it look a little bit more interesting. And when we're in After Effects, what's great about it is if your different effects are on an adjustment layer, you can very quickly just toggle through the different modes and find out how that color palette can affect your project. So once you wind up with something that looks a little bit cool, I kind of like this pastel look, we can just do, um, I'm going to copy this layer here, um, just this adjustment layer. Do Shift Command C, we'll pre-compose one more time. This time, change our composition to 1080 by 1080. And that's just a nice square. Um, we can turn on the continually rasterize and scale it up a little bit if we want. And I'm actually going to just do um, Command V, or I guess I'll grab this. So copy your adjustment layer. We'll just paste it here one more time. And why don't we go through the multiply modes um, or the different modes one more time until we have um, an even more interesting color. So we're going from this kind of boring color palette that looks very generic into something that's just a little bit kicked up and it kind of has these cool noise patterns. Obviously spend some more time tweaking the distances and noises and whatnot, but as soon as it looks pretty cool, um, another fun thing you can do is just throw one more adjustment layer on here, and this one is going to be the Unsharp Mask. So what this can actually do is add some very interesting gradients to your different layers. Um, we'll just kind of crank these values up, and as soon as we start to get a little bit of a different look here, um, kind of like an, a little glow. If you like that look, you can keep it. If you don't, you don't have to. You can mess around with your threshold as well. Again, it's just like whatever style looks kind of cool. Um, the Unsharp Mask kind of helps like separating the similar colors a little bit. And you can also with this, just toggle through your different modes and see how that Unsharp Mask could work 
um, with like a different mode um, stacked on it. So if you're happy with that, that's great. Um, what I'm actually going to do is add just a rectangle in the background, a solid color and see how that works. So I'm actually gonna turn off this um, toner that we have there and I'm gonna double click my rectangle here. So before I do that, I'm actually going to select a color um, the darkest color I see in here, I guess, would be like that tongue area. We'll just double click and it should scale up to the whole size of the comp. We'll drag this to the bottom. Then, we, 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 then when we turn on our multiply mode, it's kind of a nice like little contrast. You know, it kind of changes the color as well. And if we turn on our unsharp mask, we can wind up with something like this. Um, obviously, it kind of depends on what colors you want. I'm not sure I'm loving the, the pink pastel. Um, but... Yeah, it's just kind of an unexpected way to work with uh, your projects and like your simple little illustrations that are just like sitting on your desktop like mine are. So um, yeah, once you're done with that, just save it as a PNG and export it and post it somewhere and you are good. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, my name's Matt. Catch you later. Peace.